Now we come to Surah Abbas. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Abbas wa Taala. He, that is the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, frowned and turned aside. Anjahul Ama, because there came to him the blind man. Now the incident in the background is that once the Prophet was busy talking to the chiefs of Quraysh, important people, noble. As we have read many a times, he had more attention towards them because if they accept Iman and Islam, then you know Islam would be strengthened. And also the plight and condition of the downtrodden Muslims, the slaves, etc., they could be better. If these people who have a high position in the society, if they come in the fold of Islam. So that was only the, the, the only cause for which the Prophet used to pay attention to them. But it so happened when he was busy, Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum radiallahu ta'ala an, and he was first cousin of Hazrat Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha, and he was a blind person. He came and he wanted to address the Prophet. He wanted that the Prophet should listen to him. So the Prophet ﷺ felt it. He didn't like it. I'm busy here and he wants my attention. But because he was blind, he couldn't see the situation. He again tried to address him. On that, the, you know, there were stones on the forehead of the Prophet ﷺ, frowning. So for displeasure, the sign of displeasure appeared in, on his face. He, the Prophet, frowned and turned aside. He didn't turn towards Abdullah ibn Umi Maktoum, but his, his attention was diverted toward the same chiefs. And how could you realize that it might be that he might have purified himself? Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum, he is coming to you, he wants to talk to you. It was just possible that your giving attention to him would have purified him. Oh, yes, Zakkaru. Or he might have got some admonition, some reminding. Fatanfa'u zikra. And the admonition might have profited him. Amma manistana. As for those who is not paying any heed to you, you are attending to them very attentively. And there is no blame on you if they are not purifying themselves. You are not responsible for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to question you. Why didn't they accept your message? Well, the responsibility is theirs. But they are not paying attention. They show there is no inclination whatsoever. But you are trying and trying and trying. And who comes to you running eagerly? He wants to benefit from your company, from your talk, from conversation that he can have with you. And he has a fear of Allah in his heart. To him you pay no heed. Don't know this. Don't take to this attitude. In Nahataskira, verily this Quran is only an admonition and reminding. So who, whosoever wants, let him be reminded. Let him be admonished. Let him remember. Fi Sohofim Mukarramatin. These ayat over here, you know, the majesty of Quran. It is described here, as we have seen, إِنَّهُ لَقُرْآنُ الْكَرِيمُ فِي كِتَابٍ مَكْنُونَ لَا يَمَسُّهُ إِلَّا الْمُطَحَّرُونَ If you recall, in Surah Al-Waqiyah, then we had, إِنَّهُ فِي أُمِّ الْكِتَابِ لَدَيْنَا لَعَلِيُّ الْحَكِيمُ In the same way here, you know, فِي صُحْفٍ مُكَرَّمَةٍ This Quran is inscribed in records which are greatly honored. Marfu'atim mutahharatin, exalted, kept pure and holy. Be'aydi safaratin, in the hands of the writers. 
And who are those writers? Kiramim Barara. The angels who are noble and virtuous. So this is the situation, this is the position of this Qur'an. You don't, you know, don't, so to say, dishonor it by offering the, in this way. And you know, so to say, you are running behind these rich people and the chiefs, taking Qur'an with, in, in your hand or presenting to them Qur'an. Qur'an is a very honorable thing. So whosoever wants, okay, he has the right that this message should be conveyed to him. But whosoever feels no, no interest, no inclination, let him go where he goes. Qutil al-insanu That's to man. How ungrateful is he? Min ayyi shayin khalata. Of what thing, out of what did he create him? He never thinks. Min nutfa. Out of a sperm drop, خَلَقَهُ فَقَدَّرَهُ He created it from that and then molded him in proper proportions. ثُمَّ السَّبِيلَ يَسَّرَهُ Then made the way easy for him. The way, what does it mean? Maybe the process of birth, coming out of the womb of the mother into this world, breathing in this atmosphere. This is also a very difficult way, but Allah makes it easy. Then, you know, passing through this world, there are difficulties. We shall read, in la ila But a man is accustomed to it, and then, you know, he passes the whole life. Summa sabila yassarahu. Summa amatahu. Then he made him die. Saqbarahu. And got him buried. Summa iza shara. And after that, whenever he wills, he shall raise him. Now the former things, which one of those were easy? Creating a man out of a sperm drop was an easy job. This birth, do you think it's an easy process? How Allah has, you know, made it easy? Then everything that is going on before your eyes, each, each thing is very difficult, if you think. Only because you see them day and night. So you think you take them for granted. But if you think and ponder, everything is very great. And everything is a symbol of Allah's only potence. That He has all authority and all power. Summa amatahu faakbarahu. Summa idha shaam sharahu. It's the second step. That's all. Kalla lamma yakzima amara. No, but man has not fulfilled what his Lord has commanded him. The Lord has commanded, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And we made the covenant before coming into this world. أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ قَالُوا بَلَا But man does not fulfill the covenant. He does not fulfill what God commands him. فَلْيَنْزُرْ الْإِنسَانُ إِلَىٰ طَعَامِهِ Once before, the attention to your own creation. Now, there are, now look to the food that you eat. Let this man look at his food. It is we who poured down water abundantly. Who brought down the rain? Ourselves. Then we split it, the earth, in clefts. And then we made the grain to grow. And the grapes. And the palm trees, wa and the grapes and vegetables, was wa and the olive trees and the palm trees, wa and walled gardens of dense growth, wa abba, and all sorts of fruits and fodder, mata'allakum wa li'an'amikum. Again, that ayah repeated. And all this is a provision for you and for your cattle. Faiza jati sakha. Again compare. There was faiza jati tamatul kubra in Suratul Nazi'at. And here it is. Faiza jati sakha. Then when the deafening cry will come out. Yawma yafirul maru bin akhi. On that day, 
man will run away from his brother. وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ And his mother and his father. وَسَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ And from his wife and his children. لِكُلِّ مْرَئِمْ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَ اِذِنْ شَأْنُ يُغْنِيهِ Every one of them that day shall have enough concern of his own to make him indifferent or unmindful or of others. This is what we call in some of the traditions, nafsi, nafsi. Every would, everybody will be thinking about himself. And we have read in Surah Al-Ma'arij, يُبَسْرُونَهُمْ يَوَدُّ الْمُجْرِمُ لَوْ يَفْتَدِي مِنْ عَذَابِ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِبَنِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَاخِيهِ وَفَصِيلَتِهِ الَّتِي تُوْوِيهِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ جَنِيًا سُمَّ يُنْجِي Take all humanity, put it in hell, please save me anyhow. This will be the condition. But we should think here. We have beloveds, sons, daughters, wives, husbands, parents, and for them, for pleasing them, we do wrong things. We earn through prohibited means. For them, to provide for them a better living, to provide a better education for the children. We indulge in all things, in riba, so that they can have more comfortable, big mansion to live. Okay, go and have. In mortgage, have a house. But on that day, you will be thinking about your own self. What should be our attitude here? Here also we should first of all think of our own salvation. Then the salvation of others. But there is circle. First of all you own, who anfusakum. وَأَهْلِيكُمْ نَارَا And also your family. Then, وَأَنزِلْ أَسِرَتَكَ الْأَقْرَبِينَ Then, a broader circle. Your relatives. Your kids and kin. Then, your nation. Maybe your tribe. Then, the all mankind. But this should go in this sequence. Not that you are going and, you know, and calling others to the deen of Allah. And forgetting your own family. You don't think where they are going. And they are, you are living happily with them. Although their direction is absolutely opposite to the direction of Deen. But still your instinctive love for them, that is there. So what will happen? يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِيهِ وَأُمِّهِ وَأَبِيهِ وَصَاحِبَتِهِ وَبَنِيهِ لِكُلِّ مْرَئِمْ مِنْهُمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ شَانٌ يُغْنِيهِ now again we have here a picture of the day of resurrection as we had in Surah Al-Qiyamah. In the same way, وَجُوهُنْ يَوْمَ يَزِمْ مُسْفِرًا Many faces on that day shall be beaming, shining, glittering, glaring. وَاحِكَتُمْ مُسْتَبْشِرًا Laughing, rejoicing. People who believed and because every nafs Every soul would be knowing where it stands. Although it has not been declared, but they know it. What is going to be declared for us? So those who are going to be successful, declared successful, already on their faces, you find, you know, those signs of success. Many faces on that day shall have dust upon it. Darkness will be overspread over them. Those, they will be the disbelievers and the miscreants. 